tell us what is Grid Alternatives? <laughs> So we are a nonprofit solar installer. We install solar electric systems exclusively in lower income communities, um, both single family, multifamily, and community solar. Um, and we're really about training folks to get jobs in the solar industry. So you, know, you can kind of think of us as a barn raising model where everybody can come out and actually get that hands-on job training to get jobs in the industry. And how does it work? How does the, the training part of this work? What so um, we have a wide variety of training, but the you know, very basic way you can think about our work is um, you know, we usually install a residential system in two days um, because it's really this teaching hospital of solar. Um, and you know, we have one grid alternative staff person overseeing an installation, and then a ton of probably 10 or so in my ton here, um, job trainees coming out and they're actually up on a rooftop in the garage, they're putting in the ver in inverters, and they're sort of learning soups to nuts what it takes to install a solar electric system. And how did you get into this in the first place? Tell me what you did before then. Uh, I am a mechanical engineer by training. I uh, worked for an energy efficiency renewable energy consulting firm um, in the early 2000s when the uh, California energy crisis was sort of in full swing um, and uh, got on the same travel schedule as my now business partner. Um, and we had a lot of hotel dinners where we would sort of lean across the table and be like, I'm tired, I don't like this job. <laughs> um, and we were doing really great energy work, um, you know, saving Verizon millions of dollars on their energy bills. And then I would fly home to Oakland and, you know, Valma across the street was like, I can't pay my bill and it's too expensive. And, you know, the ener energy uh, industry was sort of poised for growth and there were like five people standing on the corner um, looking for work and couldn't get a job. And so we sort of hatched this idea about like, well, what if we, you know, bring all those things together and make it so that, you know, we can all have a better world for our kids um, and people can get jobs and everybody has access to solar power. And, and this is funded by whom? Uh, it depends on the state. So we have 10 offices across the country, one in Nicaragua, um, and we also have a fairly substantial tribal program working on reservations throughout the country. Um, and in each of those markets, the funding stream is slightly different, um, but sort of the best is when the private sector, government, and our nonprofit business model come together. Um, so when um, good low-income solar policy is led at the state or city level, um, and that has financial teeth behind it, um, then that can be combined with private um, dollars and with our business model to really make it happen. So it's a public subsidy private? Yeah, so we, it depends. I mean, here in California, um, you know, cap and trade dollars are going into disadvantaged communities. That's a, you know, strong funding source for us. Mm -hmm. Plus, um, you know, many of my colleagues out there have philanthropic parts of their business that are helping, um, you know, us do our work. Mm -hmm. Diana, I want to bring you in here. So Diana is a solar installer, or actually your solar installation supervisor. Is that yes, your title? Yes, ma'am, I am. So tell me, first of all, <laughs> what did you do before you came to Grid Alternatives? Uh, before I got to Grid, I was in a, a hip hop group. I was in a rap group. Okay. And just went all and over the country performing and stuff like that. And was solar energy at all a part of your life? It never even crossed my mind. Not once. <laughs> okay, so take me through the transition from hip hop rapper to r rooftop solar installation, because I don't consider um, that your in average. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't kind of align, kind of. But um, I was just in a, in a um, music is, was always really close to my heart. I really passionate about it. I really, really passionate about it. So um, I got the opportunity to sign to a label in California. So um, I, I signed. With the, um, with the independent record company. And um, about two to three years into the contract, I just really wanted to do something different, something that wasn't all about me, something that wasn't all about my friends. I wanted to help people. Like I just woke up one morning and was like, man, what can I do to kind of just help people? And um, I just saw this poster one day and it was this guy with a hard hat on and he just had this solar panel and this drill and I'm just like, what is he doing? Like, I kind of want to go do, you know? I didn't think I was qualified. I didn't think I had what it took to do it. And lo and behold, so I you, just ran into So you called the number on the, on the poster? I mean, was it? Uh, yes, I actually went to photovoltaic school in uh, East Los Angeles, East Los Angeles uh, Skill Center. 
I went there, and while I was in school, Grid Alternatives, they came and they did an orientation. And um, they wanted the, the top eight students from my class to come out and do this install, and I was one of those students. And it was just like a love connection right away with me and the um, supervisors, uh, Norman Graham, and, um, and just Grid, period. I just was always trying to be in the building. And even if it wasn't on the installation, if it was just sweeping or building racks or whatever it had to be, I just wanted to be a grid. It's just that type of environment. You want to be there. Now you left, or you went to work at a different solar company originally through the yes, training, right? But then you came back to Grid Alternatives? Yes, ma'am. I got all of my training, all of my hands on at Grid. And uh, they just trained me up so well that I was able to go out and just grab a job. You know, they have this thing called SBI where they actually uh, bring all of these different um, solar companies in a room and you just sell yourself to them, it's a job fair. And I actually just got a lot of hits from that and I was picked up for the uh, for-profit solar world. And uh, in February, I got the call back from Grid, like, you know, we want you back here in the fold and I'm With back the promotion, in the fold. promotion, right? Yes, you know, a little promotion, a little something, you know. <laughs> so we were talking a little bit backstage about you know, how this conference is so abstract in some ways and we, you know, we get very high level and very esoteric sometimes about, you know, where we're going with renewables and, and, you know, I just pointed out that yesterday Diana was on a rooftop putting real solar panels on real people's houses. And I, and it just sort of made me think that, that, that we speak about this as if it's not having much of an impact on, you know, the regular people in this country. And so Diana, is that, is that something that, that, that you are able to, not only in your job, but kind of take to other people perhaps uh, you know, that, that have also never heard of solar power? Are you, are you bringing this to people who wouldn't have known about it? Uh, yes, ma'am. Every day I try to tell somebody about it just to change their lives. You know, um, Instead of going to these mansions and just putting up these toys on the roof, you know, just actually being able to you know, go to somebody's house and you know, allow them to send their kids to college because of the money that they're saving or upgrade their home, upgrade their vehicle, just upgrade their lifestyle, period. You know, we have Americans every day that don't even go on vacation for years and years and years. And I mean, I think we all should be afforded those qualities and those luxuries to be able to send our kids off to a school, to be able to you know, get into an automobile of our liking, of our choice, to be able to just go somewhere and just you know, free our minds. So I think that um, being able to save, you know, at least 90% of your energy bill every month, you know, that's going to add up. That's going to add up. And if you add up all those savings in a year's time, you know, it's no telling what you can do. Mm -hmm. um, Erica, tell me, what are the overall numbers in terms of people you have trained and in terms of installs that have been done? That's and amazing. I don't know if there's an economic impact, but anything oh, you can point uh, to? I mean, we've been around, uh, depends on when you started, start counting, but in 2004, <laughs> we did two installations the whole year, and now we do over 1,000 um, across the country. Um, we've installed over 6,000 systems. Um, I think it's something like 26 megawatts, um, and we've trained 26,000 people. Wow. Um, so, uh, you know, really sort of, you know, pushing people, um, and real people, you know, it's really about solars for everyone, and it's for, you know, people who speak my language, and people who, um, you know, look like me, and people who, you know, m me in the sort of everyone sense. Um, and so I think, you know, it's really, we're building a power plant, one house and one family at a time, um, and creating this workforce that uh, so many of us really believe that it's about time we realize. Mm -hmm. And it really takes it into a, into a concrete level, right? I mean, you, you are able, do you actually go in and, and explain what the savings is like and yeah. what the... The, yeah, uh, I mean, we are, we are you know, similar to any um, mid-sized solar installation company, um, except for we only install for folks that wouldn't be able to go solar otherwise. Um, and, you know, that means, you know, looking in the back bedroom of somebody's, you know, house for their electricity bill when they're like, honey, can you go find me my bill? I don't know where it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Diana's done. I mean, our staff go above and beyond all the time, you know, <laughs> shoveling out <laughs> Mr. Rodriguez's driveway yeah. and a whole bunch of other stuff. So it's like showing them pictures of what that's going to look like and saying, you know, and because of the way that we engage folks, it's like you can also come out with your cousin and your neighbor down the street and actually put this stuff 
up on your own house. Um, or if you want to stand at the ground and take a picture, you can do that too. So it's really you know, giving people the information they need to um, decide that this is a decision for them. And I think the communities that we're in know very starkly because in many ways, they've been paying with their own health and their own communities are for our traditional energy generation. And so, um, you know, these are extremely environmental families who are like, I know about air in my neighborhood because my kids have asthma. And I know about, you know, dirt and, you know, grime and pollution in general right. in this really sort of visceral way. Uh, I would love to give an opportunity for a couple of questions. Anybody out there? Yes, one in the back. Hi, Pam Cargill with KLSD. Huge fan, Erica, as I'm sure you know. Um, Diana, I started off as a solar installer also, like 12 Power. years ago, so props. That's what's up. That's what's up. Uh, so ladies, get on the roof too, please. Um, but Erica, what I wanted to ask is, so, you know, earlier in this conference, we were, we've been talking a lot about you know, Internet of Energy, Internet of Things, all this really like high tech stuff. And, you know, Grid has been bringing solar to new demographics. Do you see that Grid could also bring the Internet of Energy, Internet of Things, storage, all these other things to, to these communities as well as part of your program? I mean, I, I think I never like to say no to anything. So that, I guess, means the answer is possibly yes. Um, <laughs> but I think. No, the need in this country and the gap between rich and poor and, um, you know, sort of the extreme need for good jobs uh, masks our ability to, um, you know, provide that training and that access. And so, uh, you know, right now, our focus is on really scaling as much as we can and helping states create good um, low-income solar policy that allows access for everyone. Um, so, you know, focus on your core competency um, is good business advice if you're in the nonprofit sector or in the for-profit sector. One more question? No? Okay, here. Hi, Emma Stewart with Autodesk, and I've volunteered for Grid Alternatives um, on one of your energy efficiency retrofits. We just finished putting solar on our roof with a PPA, but it strikes me that increasing energy costs are very much regressive. And I wondered whether Grid Alternatives has a program where, or could have a program where, folks like myself, instead of putting solar on our roof and accounting for maybe 87% of our load, could we sponsor other people's roofs and put that money to better use elsewhere? Great question. Maybe you should do both. Um, kudos for putting solar on your roof. Um, I mean, certainly, uh, you know, the way that we do our work requires people to come out and volunteer and requires um, investment of dollars. And so I think there are lots of ways, and we can talk afterwards, of um, ways that you could invest in our work and you know, help another family go solar. And our clients actually do that themselves. So they you know, frequently are paying it forward to help another family like them go solar at a very small scale. But um, you know, it's meaningful um, both for us and for them. That's great. Is, there, is it possible that there is a, an, a, an economic model that works in a for-profit basis, or, or does it only really work with the subsidies at this point? I think anything um, is possible, um, you know, sort of like yes, and, um, you know, the things that we feel very strongly about is that when you do low-income solar, there is an opportunity for many co-benefits. And so when we talk about good policy, you know, first we say, ask yourself if your energy policy is going to benefit all of our communities and lift up all of our communities. And then once you answer, here's how I'm going to approach that, you know, we can really think about making sure that energy efficiency, um, which is very funded in this country in the low income space, is wrapped into everything we do. We can think about workforce development um, and think about maximizing savings to family. So there's certainly lots of ways you can trade one bill for another. Um, and that's a great thing, um, and it gets more solar out there. Um, but for us, it really is about making sure that Mr. Rodriguez has more money in his pocket tomorrow um, than he had the day before. Great. Um, Diane, I'm not going to put you on the spot, but I do hope that someday you will 
or maybe you have done a rap about grid alternatives. <laughs> I'm working on it. You got actually. anything? <laughs> I'm working on it. And you know, you'll be the first one to hear it when I put it out. <laughs> I'll etch you on like Instagram or Twitter or something. I'll etch you. Okay, great. Well, thank you both so very, very much, and congratulations. Thank, thank you. you. Thank <laughs> you.